Today we are not making a food. What? This is a cooking channel. We make food. What are we making? We are going to make a machine to help us make food. Oh, okay. I got it. We're making a food making machine. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, we are making a turtleneck or turtleneck machine, which is similar to one you might find in Prague that rotates the turtleneck over uh, hot coals. Only ours is, is made to um, rotate the dough over a barbecue instead because we didn't have a <laughs> hot bed of charcoal just lying around. This is my concept for the turtleneck machine. It really consists of a very simple chain drive mechanism. So you can see the chain going back and forth here in a loop and uh, for a number of rollers. I have four rollers, each one of them with a, a gear on it and it, the gears drop down into the chain and just by gravity, kind of hold in place and as the chain moves, the rollers turn. And what the, keeps the rollers from just moving along with the chain is they each one of them sits down in a slot so that they can't actually travel with the chain, instead they rotate. And in order to make the chain rotate, we have a, a rotisserie motor actually over here that turns slowly. Uh, this motor I will uh, put in the comments section uh, where you, where I got the motor. It's from Amazon. It was just a, a regular rotisserie motor. And on the other side uh, is a chain tensioning device with that consists of a gear that uh, provides the other pivot for this chain to, to wrap around. I thought long and hard about how to make the rollers and I found probably the most cost effective way for me was to buy the rollers on Amazon, um, just get regular kitchen rolling pin rollers and disassemble them. The motor assembly might look a little bit complicated, but let me just uh, explain my way through it. I think you'll see that it's, it's really fairly simple. It consists of two different plates. Uh, the front plate holds the motor in place and the back place plates has a very large hole in it, a two and a half inch hole. That one uh, <laughs> scared me a little bit because that's a big hole. The, these two plates, once they're squeezed together, they hold the motor firmly in place. And then these spacers hold the whole motor assembly away from the body of the machine the right distance so that I have room to mount the axle that holds the drive gear. And the motor that I selected from Amazon actually has a, a larger diameter than my drive gear, so I needed to do a coupling to uh, couple that down. The chain tensioner assembly is really important because it keeps the chain from sagging. The way that I did that was I just created or will create a, a sandwich of sheet metal here. Between the sandwich of sheet metal we have the sprocket that the chain wraps around. Together these two bolts mount the tensioner to the frame and inside the frame there's, there's a long slot. Instead of holes, there's a slot that allows this whole assembly to move back and forth. So by loosening these two bolts, you can slide the tensioner assembly uh, forward or backward along that slot. And when it's in the right place, you just tighten down the bolts and the, the chain is at the right tension. So Sarah, I know you weren't actively involved in the building of this, but go ahead and just ask me questions if you see things that look like they're interesting and, and uh, I'll just answer them as we go. This was one of the rolling pins uh, that, that I took apart. I so how much of the rolling pin did you reuse to make the turtleneck machine? Yeah, that's a great question. I reused the roller part itself and then I kept the handle and uh, everything else I just put in my, my uh, spare parts. This here is, is one of the new rods that goes down the center of the roller. It's made out of stainless steel and I need to drill a small hole right through the rod and this is much harder than it looks because you have to you know the, the small drill bit will deflect uh, very easily well see all those pieces of metal mm -hmm. uh, this is a good time to note whenever you're working with metal you or should wood. or wood but metal especially you should wear safety glasses protective equipment because those metal uh, flakes and chips 
can really, they're very sharp. And if they get in your eye, they can easily cause blindness. And much different than, let's say, a piece of sawdust, which washes out pretty easily. So what are you doing here? These are the plugs. I'm making them um, so that they don't twist and turn when I attach them to the rods. So uh, I was putting, those are our panel nails, and they go through the holes that I drilled through the rod earlier. And now I, I'm gluing the plugs in place. And because the plugs are glued to the roller, and then the rod in the center is, is fixed using those, those nails to the plugs, nothing will spin, which is exactly what we want. So was that regular super glue you were using? No super glue. That was a woodworker's glue. And uh, now I'm putting the handles on the end. And that's just a friction fit. And those gears I will tighten up later once I have them you know, so I can measure how they fit on the chain. So that's sheet metal, right? That is sheet metal. And this, it is uh, eight inch steel. So it's really thick stock. And I'm, I'm drilling very slowly. And this is the hole that scared me. <laughs> you see why? A two and a half inches is really big. And look at all the stuff flying out as I'm drilling. It's just going everywhere. That looks like a special bit or drill thing. Drill bit. Yeah, it's called a hole saw. And hole saws, you, you just have to let them do their cutting. You, you let them you know, take time and just be patient with it. And uh, if you ever want to use a hole saw, make sure you follow instructions. And, and you're going to hear me say this all the time, safety practices. I had a run in with a hole saw one time uh, with drywall, a drywall project, and uh, almost broke my arm because of that. Um, so be careful with your tools. It looks like a lot of sparks are flying from... That's an angle grinder, yeah. And, and uh, it was easiest to cut those slots to have the, the rods drop into using that. So it just was grinding off sheet metal instead of having to drill it. And uh, now I'm, I'm assembling. It looks like everything has been well thought out and you're just assembling it really easily. Well, well thank you. It, you know, it looks that way, but I actually stopped a number of times and had to think about it and go back to my design and refine it. So what you're seeing here is, is the results of, of a lot of thinking through the process. But uh, it's, it is all going together. Now I'm, I'm tightening up the motor mounts. And you can see this, the sides of the machine are just threaded rod. There's one of the sides going on right now. So I have a question. You're going to be putting on a chain, right? Yes. Um, how are you going to put on the chain when you've already put the gears on? Oh, so good question. Uh, first, uh, what we, you see here is the gear tensioner. Remember I right. talked about the tensioner. And yeah, if you have essentially two loops. You have one loop around where the motor is, and you have another gear that forms a loop on, on the tensioner side. Right. And the chain, if you see, it comes as one long strand. And there are special links that you can use that relink the chain in the middle. So I'm just cutting it to the right length. And I don't show it here in the video, but uh, I do have that special link once I cut it to the right length to uh, link the chain together. Now, if I ever need to take off the chain, I can take off the motor side and take the chain off. Oh, that is, I love watching mechanical devices work. And that's just so satisfying seeing the rollers now it's on the barbecue and it's rolling along it looks great so the machine looks amazing mm -hmm. it yes, looks it like does. it might work but the true test is when we try making turtle ink yes because we can't call it a turtle ink making machine until it actually successfully makes turtle ink uh, so uh, we are going to do another video on that Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's already been published, we have put the link down in the comments. So go ahead and check that out. If you don't find the link there, it's because it's not published yet. You can go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notify bell. Just smash them and you will be notified when this next video comes out. And you'll be able to see, uh, if everything goes well, us making turtle neek or turtle neek with the, uh, the machine that we just made. And we can then call it a turtle neek making machine. Yep. And so I guess that's all we have for this, this episode, right? That's all. So is it too weird to say in text, until next time, Dobruchut? Yeah. Yeah, because you're not going to eat the machine. So Please and, don't eat it. Please, yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll see you in the next episode.
Oh, that was no surprise. 